All right, David, please go ahead with the second part. Okay, great. So um, let's see, there was, there was probably one more thing I wanted to mention. So it, during the break, if people missed it, um, oh yeah. So uh, Alan asked, so I, I don't have a good formula for, for you, I'm afraid, but Alan asked what the, what the relationship um, between um, between uh, these uh, S lambdas um, versus the kind of uh, double shurs, which I'll write with a little S lambda and let me write them like this. So these are meant to be symmetric, um, kind of they involve these symmetric functions uh, via the C's and they, they have some double parameters via the Y's. And th there is a, a change of basis uh, kind of formula you can work out between these two. And um, uh, probably kind of lying behind this, there is a, uh, a formula um, uh, due to Lamley and Shimizono, which, um, which expands a double Schubert uh, a back staple Schubert in terms of um, double shares. So S W as a sum of stuff times these double shares. And, um, and it has a similar flavor to, to this one. So I, I want to uh, kind of be clear about that uh, in that they give you um, some way of expressing certain pipe dreams uh, of, of enumerating a set of pipe dreams, a bumpless pipe dreams and taking their weights and something look, look like that looks here, uh, shows up here. But um, so our formula is, is maybe re requires less qualifications about which pipe dreams they are uh, once I um, show them to you. Okay, so um, yeah. That, that was something I wanted to go back to. And the other comment I wanted to make was that by, um, instead of fixing, we, we, we did fix C equals C zero zero. Um, and I'll keep doing that for the rest of the talk, but you could fix any other KK or in fact, maybe KL for any other uh, integer K. Uh, and you get a similar formula um, to this. In, in fact, it's almost exactly the same. Uh, you can you just have to change your conventions about where your pipe dreams start. So and and then simultaneously you can do this this for any uh, permutation of the integers, where by that I mean it it mixes up only finitely many uh, numbers. Okay, but but that's beyond what I'm going to talk about in the next uh, fifteen twenty minutes. Okay, so let me talk now for the rest of the time about bumpless pipe dreams, and fairly quickly we're going to move. Uh, away from um, these uh, enriched or back stable Schubert polynomials and, and, and just into the specialization where, uh, oh, I, I didn't mean to erase, but that's what's going to happen. We're going to get rid of the Cs. Okay. Okay. So bumpless pipe dreams. Um, so these things, uh, these are gadgets which are um, similar in, in some sense to the, the pipe dreams that have been uh, thought about since at least the 90s. Um, but um, in some ways, they're 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 richer. Although I guess in some sense there's a, an equivalence. Um, I expect most people here have seen them before. So um, let me just kind of go through the features of it. Um, you've got a, a permutation W, and you want to connect. Um, you've got some pipes, and you want to connect them uh, from the. Um, Kind of the, the east edge to the south edge, and you're allowed to have different kinds of connectors. So uh, I guess I'll, I'm using red. So you can have a, a connector like that. You can have a connector like that. None of them showed up like that there. You can have a, a crossing of a pipe. Um, you can have a blank pipe, and you, you can have straight pipes, and you can have a blank pipe. I guess I'll straight like that. So, uh, but the, the the key thing you can't have is a bump. Like two pipes cannot come together like that. Um, and so that's why that's that's the reason for the name. Um, and so here uh, to see which um, uh, which permutation they correspond to, you just start at one and then figure out which entry it, it ends up in. So this one ends up at three, that one ends up at four, that one ends up at, ends up at two, seven, six, one, 
slides. Okay. Um, and what else about these? Well, each one of these um, gets a weight. And the bumpless pipe dreams are, are very easy to assign a weight to. I guess the, the ordinary pipe dreams were too. But here you just product over the, the, the blank boxes. So I've tried to line up this, um, uh, this product so that it roughly matches the order here. But here's x1 plus y1. So th these are the x1s, x2s, x3s. So maybe I'll write it that way, x1, x2, x3, et cetera. This would be y1, y2, et cetera. And so here I see x1 plus y1, x1 plus y2, x2 plus y1, and so forth. There are, are all the, uh, the contributions. Okay, and there's a, um, so this is a, a formula. So this is first uh, stated in Lamley Shimizono's paper, but um, there, there's a wonderful proof by Anna Weigand um, using um, transition, which makes the whole thing very simple. Um, but so the theorem is that the, um, the Schubert polynomial is the sum over all uh, bumpless pipe dreams for a given permutation of the weight of the pipe, or the weight of the, of, of the diagram. Okay, so again, I expect most of you have seen something like this before. Um, yeah, if you're seeing this for the first time, then um, you're gonna see a bunch more pictures like this in a moment. Uh, there's a there's some moves you can do on the bumpless pipe dreams, and um, the first of these was introduced um, by Lamley Shimizono to, um, um, and it's called the droop move. And oh, I, I guess I skipped over this, but this this one here is called the Rotha diagram, bumpless pipe dream, and that's just because it is the Rotha diagram. The blank boxes here are right there in the Rotha diagram for that. Um, uh, for this permutation. Okay, but then you can start playing with things. And so here's a here's a droop move. I'm gonna I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna droop this pipe down into there. And so that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna droop it down. And when I do that, um, this uh, empty box gets moved up and and it, it ends up looking just like this pipe dream right here. Okay, so that's what that's the first move. Um, there's another kind of move which I'll I'll call a drip, um, and this this is like the small droop. Um, oh, I guess I should go back and say what are the rules? When are you allowed to do a droop? You're allowed to do a droop when you've got a uh, elbow tile like this in the in this corner. You've got a blank tile in the in the southeast corner, and you've got no um, other elbows at all in the rectangle. So again, elbow tile in, north, in the northwest, blank in the southeast, and no elbows uh, anywhere else in the rectangle. Okay. So for example, uh, like right here, according to the strict rules of drooping, I would not be able to droop that guy down to there because uh, look, there's an elbow right there. Uh, people, so this is, okay, so people have written other put other moves on pipe dreams that do allow that kind of droop, uh, um, but uh, which is a good thing to do. Um, so that has to be allowed in the what we're calling drips, um, but basically a drip is one where you only move within a two by two rectangle. You're only allowed to move in a two by two rectangle. And it basically is just one where you take any kind of uh, elbow here and a blank box there and you just swap them like we did here. So this two by two rectangle um, the, the kind of pictures got swapped. So if, for the drip moves, you could have had an elbow in, in the corner, in the other corners too. That would be okay. Okay, and lastly, uh, we have what we're calling a drop, which is another kind of small droop. Um, but this one necessarily goes across, moves a crossing. Um, so, so here, what I've got is I'm going to drop this elbow down into that empty one. 
And the rule is I should, I should have a, um, an elbow, I should have a blank box, and I should have no other blank boxes in the rectangle that they form. Okay, and I do that, and, and I just do the droop. And that blank box ends up jumping up to where the elbow was. Uh, a key thing about the drop move is that it always ends up moving one of the crosses. So that cross right there got moved over to this cross right here. Okay, okay so those are the three moves um, that that will that we'll use. And um, yeah, so I want to say uh, I want to introduce a new kind of uh, notion of. of uh, an adjective for BPDs. So a uh, bumpless pipe dream is called flat if um, whenever there's a northwest corner, and by northwest corner, I mean kind of of blank boxes, of blank boxes, of blank tiles. Um, so any northwest corner should have a, uh, a cross directly next, uh, up to the left of it. And what we think of, of with the reason that this is a, um, yeah, so roughly this is because I don't want to allow any drip moves, any small droops to, to let these, um, these boxes drift to the Northwest. So we're gonna be um, moving boxes around and, and these crosses will block those from drafting, uh, drifting any further Northwest. So uh, I kind of just alluded to it, but the, the drift class of a bumpless pipe dream is all of the other bumpless pipe dreams that are attained uh, from it by these drips and their inverses, which you might call undrips. So you could, you could drip down um, taking one step to the Southeast, or you could undrip up taking one step up to the Northwest. And the, the condition of being flat is that you can never undrip it. It's as undripped as possible. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, each drift class has its has a unique flat bumpless pipe dream. So those ones are kind of canonical representatives for for drift classes. And uh, from that observation, um, you get. Zhao uh, uh, Ji has a question in the chat, and I'll address it in just a second as soon as I write out the formula, um, just observing that you can break up the set of all bumpless pipe dreams into drift classes together with the formula of Lamley Shimizono for, um, uh, for, bump, for, for Schubert polynomials, that tells you that, well, you can chunk together uh, bumpless pipe dreams into their drift classes and then just sum those up. And then therefore you have a, a formula for Schubert polynomial as a sum of drift class polynomials. Um, and then of course that just pushes the question down the road to, well, what can you say about these drift class polynomials? And the answer is, well, we have tableau formulas for them. So sometimes we can say quite a lot. Okay, Daoji asks um, in the drop move, can they involve non-adjacent columns? Uh, yes, they can involve non-adjacent columns. Um, I don't, I, yeah, so the example I drew didn't have one, but that can certainly happen. Okay. Um, so you can generate all the, so yeah, one question about this is in order to, for this kind of formula to be useful, you'd need to have a way of, well, figuring out how to get all of the drift classes or equivalently how to get all of the flat bumpless pipe dreams. And you can generate all the flat bumpless pipe dreams by starting with the Rotha pipe dream and doing a sequence of drop moves and undrips. So you, you drop and what you end up with might not be flat, so then you flatten it. So in this case, I had to flatten it by moving that one up one step and this one up one step, and then I get something flat. Okay, and so it's a little lemma um, that says that, um, the common, that this kind of composed procedure, start with the Roth diagram, drop and flatten in all possible ways, you get all possible flat diagrams and therefore you generate all drift classes. 
Yeah, so that's part of our um, story here. Uh, so here's an example um, of the one that we were looking at before. So three, four, two, seven, six, one, five. Uh, in this case, there are 10 flat diagrams. Um, and there, in this case, there happen to be 30 total bumpless pipe dreams. So this is this groups things together a little bit. Now, the ones we were looking at before, let's see. Uh, yeah, there's the Rotha one and I think the two that we looked at before. Um, I'm not I'm not seeing any moves at the top of my head that are against non-adjacent columns, but truly there are some. Um, so that's that's fine. Um, you can get somewhat more efficient. So if we do the permutation one three two nine eight seven six five four, that has over one hundred sixty three thousand bumpless pipe dreams, and uh, twenty one of them are flat. And using Julia, which I'm going to blame Anders for uh, convincing me to try to start doing, uh, it takes um, essentially no time to compute the flat ones and a little bit of time to compute all of them. So um, I'm about done. And what I'll do in just one minute is do a little demonstration of, of how these things are, are computed. Um, maybe a little advertisement for anyone that wants to help me develop this a little bit more. Um, but let me wrap up by, um, I alluded to a Tableau formula and let me kind of illustrate that uh, briefly. So here is a different permutation. It's a permutation in S8. And we would, and this is a flat diagram, right? There's in this case, there's only one corner that's worth worrying about and it's this one and there's a, a cross up to the Northwest. Um, and we'd like to figure out, we'd like to somehow get the polynomial, which enumerates everything in its drift class. And the rule is, well, you just write down tableaus. Um, but you have to be a little careful uh, with the tableaus because if you if you kind of look at it, this one, this this box here is it, it can drift, but then it, it can't drift past this box here. So whatever the number is in there, it's got to be at most that number. The numbers, I guess, by the way, here, I, I'm going to, I should write it. So I'm going to record the row. You have a little bit of a choice here. You could record columns uh, uh, of the drift. So if I've got a box and it's drifting to row um, four, then I'll write down a four. Uh, so, so here's the picture of the drift configuration. This box drifted down to row four. There it is. This box drifted down to row five. There it is. So this box drifted down to row four too. But you see, um, this box can never drift to a lower row than this box. So its its number, its label should always be bounded above by that one. So that's the kind of tableau formulas that we have. Uh, and yeah, right here, here's kind of the maximal southeast drift tableau. Is there any relation between the one and the four? Uh, this one and yeah. this four? Um, that's a good question. In, in in theory, there could be. In this case, there's not. That one is blocked uh, by that cross. So yeah, there's a there's a bunch of rules that you can come up with that tell you how to come up with these labels. But for example, that, that cross blocks that one. Thanks. Yeah. If you forward stabilize a, a drift class, um, what symmetric function do you get? Um, I'm going to start with the Schubert as a sum of drift classes. I'll take that equation and stabilize everything. The Schubert turns into a Stanley. Okay, I see. So, so you, um, I see, you stabilize that way. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and I don't think I know the answer to it. Uh, I, so, in, in the cases when there's a single um, component, it's very easy. It's just going to be some version of a flagged sure function, or I guess then if you forward stabilize it, it'll just be one of the double supersymmetric shares. But in general, when you've got multiple components, 
I do not know the answer off the top of my head. Um, I'm going to change my sharing. If there are any other questions about the slides, now is a good time to ask, but I'm going to put up one other thing before we quit, before I quit talking. Rebecca, do you, do you have a question or? No, okay. I, I have a question. Oh, Oops, sorry. sorry. So, so, well, maybe you don't need a slide. So is that bijection between Tableau and bumpless pipe dreams? Like when you fill in this Tableau, is that just a representative for the bumpless pipe dream that is in its class? Yes, that's all it is. Yes. All right. It, or equivalently, the drift configuration that tells you how far the 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 key thing is that the the crosses in the bumpless pipe pipe, pipe, pipe dream cannot move under these moves. They're not allowed to move. Uh, okay, so uh, we're about out of time, but I, I wanted to just advertise this. Um, well, um, I guess I need to do one more thing. Sorry. Uh, this uh, story that Anders got me involved in, which is working in Oscar and Julia. And so for example, if I want to, um, Um, I can generate all of the bumpless pipe dreams rather quickly. Um, so here's, let's take one, let's take W2176543. And let's take the Rotha diagram of that. And so here's a little ASCII uh, image uh, or depiction of the bumpless pipe dream. And let's take all of the uh, bumpless pipe dreams for, for this one. Um, so that uh, this one's real reasonably small. Let's see how many there are. There's probably not very many. Okay, 594 of them for that, for that guy. Um, I'm not gonna, we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna do a, a longer one, but the, the for fairly large examples getting up into 80,000, it, it takes about 40 seconds to generate all of the bumpless pipe dreams. Um, and so the, the one other thing I wanted to show off was a little gadget for uh, generating and, and, and kind of jumping around with these things. Um, so you can, you can play with these droop moves. Uh, here's, a, here's the Rotha diagram. And if I wanna see all of the droops of that, I just click on it and there they are. Um, now I, I have to say, I, I bounded it at 20. So there might've in fact been, there probably, uh, let's see, in this case, there might've been just, there might've been 21. Uh, so I had to come up, I had to cut them off somewhere. But um, if you want to do drops, there's many fewer drops. And so um, there you go, there's just two of them. And you can just navigate through all of the, uh, um, uh, all of the moves on bumpless pipe dreams by clicking on a diagram. So if I click on this diagram, it'll give me all the droops of that one. And there they are. And if I click on this one, I get all the droops. And eventually there won't be any droops. So let's see what happens there. There were no droops for that one. Okay, so that, that was just a little bit of, um, of fun, but it's hopefully useful to, um, for kind of exploring these moves. So thanks everyone for listening. Thanks very much, David, for a very nice talk. Um, let's thank the speaker.